Welcome back, dear After Ellen viewers, to an all new hiatus free edition of Adana A Does It with Glee. Yes. Glee is finally back from hiatus, and it felt like it was forever, and yet not long enough. This episode is all about Sadie Hawkins. And if you don't know what that is, that's a dance where traditionally the girls ask the guys to go to a dance. Or for me, who attended all girls Catholic prep school, um, we called that every dance. Before I delve into the actual episode, which by the way, I admit I found rather delightful and I expressed on Twitter to which someone uh, asked me if I was drunk. And no madam, I was not, because it was really early in the morning when I watched the episode. Anyway, there were some major rustlings in the Glee fandom, and I'd like to address at least one of them right now. Look what we have here, a Glee panel, and Heather Morris is on it. Okay, I bet she has some interesting things to say about Britanna. Uh, Heather Morris says that Bram... me. Brief synopsis. Basically, Heather Morris said that she really likes the relationship between Sam and Brittany. She doesn't think that Santana and Brittany will get back together, and that she thinks Sam is a better match for Brittany, that he really truly allows her to be herself. Um, she also commented that she thought it was funny when Sam kind of, excuse me, Court Overstreet, who plays Sam, trolls and teases the Britanna fans with pictures and tweets and, and things of that nature. I know a lot of fans were were very upset by Heather Morris's opinions, and that is Heather Morris's opinion, and she's totally entitled to it. Um, but that doesn't negate the fact that people were upset, and a lot of you reached out to me on Twitter and Tumblr, and I really appreciate you uh, sending your thoughts and, and, and asking me for my input. Thank you so much. Um, I feel like I've talked a lot about it in the past few weeks, um, and it's probably best that I address it finally and for, you know, for the last time, as the fandom balladeer does in song. I'm sorry if your hearts are broken by the words the unicorn has spoken. I know sometimes Glee can give you the blues, but nothing on Glee is set in stone. I have a feeling they'll throw a pretend a bone. There are other paths to choose. There's the married lady docks on Grey's while making babe Betty McRae. Kalinda with her leather skirts and boots. Dr. Lauren and the sexy babe page them fall in love while she's singing. I only will be back really soon. But a stray from Glee makes you wary. You could always go and Try my berry. I'm just saying. In closing, don't like what they say on ugly panel. You have the power to change the channel. Or just like me, you can wait and see. Pretend I live happily ever after. Now that we got that off our chest, and we could talk about Glee. So yes, I did like this episode. I didn't think it was amazing or perfect, but there was something about the energy and spirit of the episode that really drew me in. I know a lot of people express displeasure in the whole Tina storyline, and it was it was it was a wacky way to go. It was a wacky way to go. But people, let's talk about high school crushes, okay? Straight girls get crushes on gay guys they know are gay, and gay girls get crushes on girls they know are straight, and gay guys get crushes on guys they know are straight. It's high school. It's high school crushes. I'm pretty sure for a short period of time, when I was in high school, I had a crush on the statue of St. Bernadette. I didn't think it was completely, completely out of left field, that, that it wasn't possible 
that just because Tina knew that Blaine was gay, that she couldn't have feelings for him. Sometimes you just can't help what you feel. Same for Blaine. What kind of bugged me, though, is when Blaine was addressing his crush on Sam, the whole, I'm not a predatory gay thing, did that come from the feedback from a couple seasons ago when Kurt had a crush on Finn? I feel like that was really unnecessary to say because just because a gay person has a crush on a straight person or, or you know, someone they assume to be straight doesn't make them predatory. Being a creepy, creepy predator makes you predatory, not just having a crush on someone who doesn't have a crush on you back. So speaking of predatory, Kitty and the Puckermans. That's like a, it sounds like a 70s band, doesn't it? Yeah. That whole thing, I would, I'd like to, I would love to address it, but you see, I get this, like, this rise of, of bile in the back of my throat. That little exchange between Marley and, and Brittany before the dance number, which I loved. Um, I couldn't tell if I was actually watching Glee or I was, if I was watching one of the SimGM spoofs of Glee, which if you haven't seen, um, absolutely, absolutely watch it. They're amazing. Um, this is their Twitter handle, so follow them because they're, they're awesome. I know I wasn't the only one who was excited to see Sugar. I was worried she was gone. I thought she had left, but she was back making her crazy sugar faces, and I was thrilled. I actually really loved the sequence where Sam asked if he can borrow Blaine's lip balm because the exact same thing used to happen to me in high school with a girl I had a crush on in. I remember watching her put the lip balm on. Like, it, like it brought back, like, instant memories. So, well done, Glee. Well done. That was a really genuine moment, and it was nice to see. I really liked all of Kurt's scenes in this episode. I think he's really dealing with some real things. He's, he's feeling, I felt that frustration and loneliness, but also excitement at the same time with him. Um, I like this new friend, or maybe more than friend, um, scruffy, cute British guy. The first song of the evening was Baby Got Back, which, of course, is the Sir mix -a -Lot classic, but the arrangement that the Adam's Apple, the Indiana Glee Club, did was actually from a gentleman named Jonathan Colton. Now, if you read anything about this episode, you may have seen that there was a lot of controversy around this particular song because Glee didn't really give Jonathan any credit or... Now, Glee's done this before. That's the thing. Glee did this back when uh, they used Girls Just Want to Have Fun. They used Greg Laswell's arrangement. And you remember when Finn was singing right into Santana's face after he outed her horribly and horrifically scarred her for life. Um, this is what I don't get, though. Glee has, like, the most talented, talented arrangers and, and musicians working for them. Why would you need to take someone else's arrangement? It's... Then we have Tina actually getting to sing like a real song without being interrupted by a fire alarm or something. Um, from Obviously from Jesus Christ Superstar, I Don't Know How to Love Him. It's simple. It's exactly the kind of song that a girl would be singing in her high school glee class. You know, it doesn't require a lot of crazy vocal, you know, tricks. Just beautiful, simple, meaty, heartfelt song. So my favorite number of the evening tell him uh performed by the girls of glee and i mean all the girls of glee except kitty who cares um unique was there which i'm always so excited to see unique um it was amazing it was fun it was the dancing was just you know they looked like a bunch of frenetic maniac pixies up there and these dresses that were like whirling dervishes of of uh, blue cotton candy and i loved it Ryder didn't have much to do in this episode, but he did do a really, really nice rendition of I Only Have Eyes For You at the dance. It was, you know, crantastic. Will he have a future with the Cheerio with the neck brace? Only time will tell. No Scrubs, originally performed by TLC, but this time performed by the man of Glee. Uh, you know, at first when I heard about this, this, this cover, I was like, but I really liked it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And they looked like they were having a lot of fun doing it. It was kind of a jam. 
I had fun watching them do it. And that's kind of the point, right? Having fun watching. The girls' number, Bruno Mars's Locked Out of Heaven, was epic. It was fantastic. Um, the combination of just their energy and their costumes, they're like different, slightly different variations of blue and then white uh, for this winter dance. They were gorgeous and just really like letting loose, like giving it their all. And I like to see the girls of Glee really, really let go. Um, this song I will be listening to on my iTunes. And I'm here with a special guest for Dana Does It with Glee, my dear friend Hen. Hi guys. And we are going to discuss the other major, major uh, upset in the Glee community. And that is the major, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, turn off, if you're not ready for a spoiler, of a possible Quintana coupling. <laughs> she doesn't even know what to say. What do, what do you think about the possibility of Quinn and Santana having some sort of romantic entanglement, whether it be long-term or uh, a hookup. Okay, it's not like I don't visually appreciate it. <laughs> you know, the one thing I usually expect from my show is to be natural, and I feel like if something like that happens now, they were never, unlike Britney and Santana, who were more than best friends. Or even, even Quinn and Rachel, who have a more intimate yeah. friendship. Um, and Quinn has her professor thing going on. And the Jodie Foster clan bake, of course. Of course, yeah. How do you think that Britannia fans will react if this actually does happen? This might actually be a distraction, which is might, might be the reason why they're doing that, you know. Um, what? The lesbian so? blogger community uh, <laughs> being distracted is a good thing, apparently. No, for the time being. I mean, I personally, if, if Britney's not going to be with Santana, then shouldn't Santana be able to have some sort of, like, organic kind of new relationship. Yeah, that's was that kind of was my other thing that I was thinking about that I feel like if he chooses to turn it to turn it into an arc, he would probably want to bring something someone new. More importantly, how do you think the Faberi fans are going to react? I mean, Faberi is a big deal. They even have their own convention. I think it's actually that's going to be a bit more dangerous than the <laughs> Tony fans actually. Um I don't know. I guess if we just have the three of them together, it's just going to solve all of our problems. So, I think at this point, in Glee, we'll take what we can have and be happy about it. I, I, I guarantee you there are going to be some people that are going to disagree with you on Twitter tonight. Let me know what you think. What are your thoughts? Are you, like, looking forward to this possibility? Is it Does it horrify you? Are you kind of more of a fairy? Are you more of a... Just tell me what you think in the comments, and then tweet me, Dana Pickley, on Twitter. And thank you so much, and thank you to Hannah. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining me on this week's Dana Does It with Glee! Woo! Glee.